So I thought to show people how to um, edit card types that I'd use, I'd record myself editing a um, card type that I had for an old deck of mine, because recently I figured out how to make typing cards and drawing cards. So I have to um, edit the fields of the thing because there's not enough spaces for all the information needed. So, for example, I have English, but I need to have a uh, second English because when you type things, they only will accept one possible answer. And sometimes you needed to explain the um, uh, the definition because they're not always like exact. And, you know, English has multiple different meanings for different words that the meaning in Japanese does not necessarily have. So I needed to make an extra tab for um that information. After that I am um, organized like checking the field types with the um, Google Sheets that I have and I noticed that um, I didn't have a page number um, field type instead I had a thing called picture which was there because I was confused about how to add pictures into um, fields because this was like when I was a, uh, one of my first decks so I just renamed picture as page number and after that I you know downloaded a Google Sheet and deleted all of the um, cards within the Harry Potter deck and then I imported those cards um, and set it to the Harry Potter card type for the Harry Potter card deck and then they're all inputted in there. Um, then I um, opened the card type to look at what it looks like. So what I'm going to do is add a new card type based off of a different deck. So I have um, my Clan Nad deck, which is my newest deck. So I go over to the um, first set of typing, which is the typing the English answer, and I copy everything inside the um, text field to then paste within a new deck. So you go over to the top of the card thing and click um, Add Card, and it remakes a um, card, and you, it's good to rename these cards so that you can quickly identify what card it is. So I called it Type English, because you're typing English. And I basically deleted what's in that um, in the front template and pasted everything in the old template and then deleted and edited the some things and edited stuff so that, um, for example, the different fields in the different decks do have different names due to being adapted from different, you know, sources. Like, for example, I have kan fudi as the kanja and furigana rather than reading as that, while reading is the one for the Fudigana sentence that I have for this deck. That's, so you have different um, read uh, titles. So you have to change those titles. Um, but then I'm going over and copying the bottom half of um, the type English to then paste in the bottom half of the type English card on the in the Harry Potter version. And now uh, oh, you have to for um, typing cards, the um, styling area also has a lot of information that is needed as well for this to work. So I um, pasted that information within the thing. Um, and now I'm looking through it to change the color of the text box because I thought pink looked very bad. And I knew that was in the styling area. So it was under input type ends because you're typing in the answer and input means you're inputting things. Um, and I looked at background and it had that random number, which was the um, color number. And I copied that color number to um, paste around and I um, filled with it. You can um, uh, use the Google to get different colors using the color picker. Because um, they give you the same number code that the Anki um, recognizes. So I filled with that a bit to... Um, get a color that I liked. Um, I also noticed that the um, incorrect answer, because that's the only answer you can see on um, the preview for typing decks is the incorrect answer. And it was very hard to see the word example. So I went over and got a darker color for that. That makes it easier to see your incorrect answer. Um, and then I went over and, um, you know, changed some of the um, decks uh, field names so that it matches things correctly so that words will show up so like philosopher wasn't there before and I had to um, change some of the text sizes so that they um, look nice and I copied and pasted things and moved things around to make things you know look nice because um, you know that's how you make cards you want them to look nice so they're motivated I don't know that's just a me thing um, theoretically all you have to do is what I just did second ago, um, 
that's basically what I have to do to make typing cards is to go through and change all the field types. Um, but I'm basically now um, editing things so they look nice because I like certain formats and I think it looks aesthetically pleasing. Um, and this is just me going through that um, for a bit. Um, now I've done that, I'm making a new card type, which is, um, so when you make a new card type, it copies what you, um, whatever card you're currently opened for the card type. So that's why I went over to the, um, I went over to the first card type because there's less, um, data in that first card type than the typing card type. The typing card type has a whole lot of data that I didn't really want. So, um, I went to that one to do duplicate that card before editing it. So this right here is for writing because I like doing a um, deck that does here's a note card and then a typing card then a note card then a typing card then the drawing card so that there's a steady progression of knowledge because I find um, furigana and the card is best for learning the English meaning well after you get the English meaning down you probably kind of know the kanji and the reading together so after that, then you have to figure out, do you know the reading? Which is what this card's for, is figuring out whether or not you know how to read the card. So I took off the furigana from both the example sentence and the kanji. And then I went over and made a new deck, which is going to be the typing version of that. So I went back to Clan Ed because it needs a different um, format for typing. I mean, it has different programming, whatever, and I don't really know how that works. So I copied that information and went over and, you know, changed the card type so that it matches. Um, and then that's all you have to do is for the card types. So for English typing and Japanese typing, they have different codes needed. Um, um, I think that it's not like 100% different. The Japanese one makes that if you're on the computer, that um, you, if you type with not in, without a Japanese keyboard, it automatically switches it to Japanese which is the why you want to copy exactly what um, the thing says. But um, theoretically, you could probably just use the English typing for both and just change the word English into hiragana or whatever your field type is that you're um, copying it from. Uh, but anyway, this is now I'm just, you know, editing these cards so that um, they look nice, adding like gold and different colors and organizing. So I like you know, I'm going to get all the information well, and I know where the information I'm looking for is. Um, and once I'm done editing um, this card, I'm going to make the um, uh, uh, drawing card, which, um, just saying in the description below, I do, I'm going to have um, quick links that show where that is, but the, yeah, right now I'm starting that. So I'm making the new deck that I base off of the first deck, because it has all that programming stuff, and now I'm editing things so that it looks nice. Like I noticed that um, I didn't have the page numbers anywhere on these cards and I feel like that's kind of important. So I was thinking about where I was going to put them and I decided, you know, the bottom is the best place to put it. And um, I figured out, you know, where the bottom is because it can get, because it's before um, the script, but it's like after the second script. It can be kind of confusing to find, um, where you're supposed to put information on the card but um it's pretty easy like the test like you just like put in a number like a letter and it the, you look for the letter in the thing and if everything glitches out you delete that letter it's kind of how um it works a lot of times things are um spaced out so you can kind of like find stuff if you see your field name that's where your field name goes and you can kind of ignore any other coding because who knows what that coding even does um so now I'm copying the bottom part because I edited the top part and editing um, the field name types because they don't um, match what, you know, the new deck has because, you know, different decks use different names. Um, so adjusting the size and stuff and I'm basically done with the this um, card. Um, and now I'm just going through, I'm going to start, what am I doing? So I, I was moving stuff around. I liked um, my last card I made better. So now I'm going through. If you make like an error, you have to um, copy and paste from a different card because we're not programmers. 
otherwise you wouldn't be on this video. So we don't really know what those codes are saying. So if you make a mistake in the code, um, you have to paste down the correct code and delete the bad code, which can be um, inconvenient because there isn't any back button in Anki. So rather than deleting things, it's why you always see me selecting stuff. I'm actually cutting things just in case I cut something wrong and I can just paste it back down. Um, so, yes. So now I'm basically just going through everything to make sure things look nice. I'm specifically I'm adding the Harry Potter Sorcerer's Stone page number um, thing to all the um, cards. But um, after you make all your cards, you need to test your cards. This is very important because it's very easy to not um, change all the things. You cannot test cards in preview, it doesn't work. But um, you go over and reorganize your cards so that the cards you want to test is at the number one position. So right over here I tested this card and I wrote philosopher incorrectly and it was like that's not the word philosopher because I don't know how to spell that word. So I just copied the um, the title philosopher so that I could find it because I can't type it and then I um, paste it in there and you see it's still red. That is bad. That means I did not do something right in the coding. So um, I went back into the card and I just re read through the code to look for the incorrect thing. And I found it. It said um, type uh, something. So like I went down and it said correct answer equals meaning. And that's incorrect. There's no meaning on this thing. The correct answer for this card is um, English because that's the name of that field. So I changed it to English and I went over and tested it out with Philosopher and see now it's green. That means that the um, code is working for um, this card because Philosopher is spelled correctly and it's recognizing that it's spelled correctly. Um, after that, I reorganized the card to test the um, Japanese version of typing so that um, when I um, play the card, it's like, write the word, and I wrote Kensha, which is not the right word because it's Kenja. Then this is what the drawing card looks like. There's no um, correction on the card. You have to look at it yourself, but it saves what you drew so you can like really compare what you um, got, which I think is nice. And then I went over and wrote Kenja, and I went, yes, that's the correct, and that's what you do. Now I'm just um, reorganizing the card types so that they're in the correct order for um, learning purposes. Thank you.